Finally, the moment a couple of you have been waiting for. It's a whole like bing bong jack. Coming to you from an undisclosed location in Duval and St. John's County. The show for Jag fans by Jag fans. You can't have a newcomer come in and steal a show. Here are your hosts, Franklin and Michael D. How do you say it? Dezoba. Welcome to the Jaggernaut Podcast. All righty. Thank you for joining us for another Jaggernaut Podcast. This episode, we are going to be discussing pretty much uh, the focus will be the last Thursday night's Hall of Fame game between the Jags and the Raiders, the first preseason game of the season. We've got some, uh, we got a taste of the Doug Peterson Jacksonville Jaguars. Duval. Not, Duval. not really worth a Duval. Duval. <laughs> hey, Duval. Uh, well, we, we'll well, give them what yeah, they what, earned. We'll give them what they earned, and that's what you've earned. You've earned a little pussy Duval. Duval. That's what you've earned. Congratulations, Doug Peterson and Jacksonville Jaguar. That's what yeah, you've earned. This is, the, um, this is the first taste of the Doug Peterson era. It is. It is not a good one. I, in my, uh, my opinion, uh, what, what's your, what's your take? Obviously it sounds I, like you agree. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree. I mean, if, if you look at any facet of this game outside, outside of QB pressure, okay. If you want one place to say, okay, we did all right there. QB pressure. We did. Okay. Everywhere else, the Raiders beat us. Everywhere else, not one place. Now, people are going to say, sorry, man, just chill out. It's the preseason. It's the first game. We didn't play our starters. All I'm going to ask you, Frank, is what did we say last year after the Cleveland game? We said, oh, Cleveland's playing starters. We didn't play any of our starters. Oh, it's the first preseason game. Cleveland killed us with the run and with the screen pass. The exact same thing Oakland did did to us. We didn't have an answer for it then, and now we don't have an answer for it now. And nobody can tell me it's not going to be the same old Jags or why it won't be the same old Jags. So here, tell me, Frank, you're always the optimistic one. I'm always the pessimistic one. This time I need you to step up and tell me why I shouldn't be panicking. Well, okay, I'm going to do the optimism. Okay. I don't know that I believe it, but I'm going to do it. Okay. It is because. Lie to me, Frank. Lie to me. It it is because this is Doug Peterson's big first game. And we didn't know what to expect with Urban Meyer. I don't. um, So obviously uh, it, it turned into a dumpster fire season last year. There is no reason to assume that this will be a dumpster fire season this year. Um, We have a coach that has a track record of professionalism and he has a Super Bowl. So the, I'm not saying um, we're going to be great. I'm saying that this is not the game to judge how the season's going to go. That being said, now that that's as optimistic as I can go. I, I, I do, they do think there is some legitimacy in the fact that this was just a preseason game. That being said, the problem I've got is that this is all that we have of football in a Doug Peterson led Jacksonville team. And you said the thing just now, that you never want to leave in the taste of the Jaguar fan base, which is same old Jags. We got to get away from that. It's the biggest. And until you as a team knock, you know, do something that doesn't look like that. We cannot get away from it. It has been groundhog day for us every season and it looked like this under Marone. It looked like this under Urban Miller. 
it or it looks like this for the first game for Doug Peterson. You mean Urban Meyer? Because it definitely ain't Miller time here. <laughs> it's finger banging time. Uh, bang, 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 bang. <laughs> well, uh, sorry, I Mike, have fun. I have well, Mike, fun with that Mike guy. Mike Dempsey likes to call him Urban Miller on the concept that he doesn't know the names of other play- players. So, he, ooh, okay, that's good. So that's good. it makes sense to me to just not give him the dignity of calling him his own name. Uh, but look. This is the thing. It's like, man, the biggest, I, I don't care about the screen as much. Like I know that has been an issue for the, for us. I, running screen plays against a team in the first preseason game. That's kind of cheap to me. I felt like Josh, uh, McDaniels. Uh, his, Josh McDaniels. McDaniels, he's in his front hometown. He's trying to make a name. He like, he put Stidham back in. I mean, I think he wanted to win this game more than we did yeah but uh, why didn't we like i get i get we didn't have our starters right yeah but but when your team is such hot garbage so hot garbage that we have been over the last four or five years six years would you not game plan a little bit Just no the, i and then like, the like, see, i don't you would you don't want to win like you you say okay if we win great if not I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that's exactly more. what okay. you have to. I, in in fairness, and this I'll go back to. So I guess I'm going optimism again. This game does not matter. It really doesn't. If you can, if you can check boxes that you, as a coaching staff, and and we're giving them the benefit. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt when I say this, and assuming this is a professional um, organization organization which we haven't seen in a while. So I'm assuming that because it's Doug Peterson's led team. Uh, Then what you are doing is you don't care about this is why. So Sean McVay of the Rams, he won't play any of his starters. I heard he's not even playing his backup quarterback all all preseason. That's how much other coaches care at, at all about preseason. They don't care at all about preseason. Now, I think we need the work. We're not the Rams. We're not the Super Bowl winning Rams. Okay. We need the work. They don't. So I get it in his respect. We need the work. Now, did we need it in that game? Not necessarily. We didn't play a, a number of people, but we did we were able to see some matchups that are concerning. That's the issue. I don't have as much of a concern for game planning, coaching, like X's and O's, Jimmy's and Joe's. X's and O's go out the window. I don't care about X's and O's. I didn't see anything in that that looked like we game planned at all. That didn't look like the uh, offense that I'm expecting to see, uh, that I that I believe is probably being implemented. That was bare bones stuff. The defense I'm not sure about. I don't know how, you know, I didn't necessarily see blitzes and things like that. So I think the, the, the key for me is at Jimmy's and Joe's. Like when it was one-on-one, what did we see? Who did we see get, uh, get some execution? Who did we see win, one, you know, matchups and that sort of thing? That was what I was looking up, looking for, and that's where I do have some concerns. All right. All right. So we're going to go right to there, brother. Here's what I want from you. I want you to give me one player who made the team or who, who made Franklin's team Franklin's Jacksonville Jaguars, obviously hypothetical, and one player you would cut. Okay. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, I, out of in this game, who deserves to be cut, and I hate to do this, Shaq Quarterman. I'd, I'd cut him. Like, now I'm not saying I will cut him. Like, I'm not saying he will be cut. Based on what I saw, I don't – Shaq Quarterman, and I, he's a hometown guy. He played for your college team. That's right. I'm rooting for Shaq Quarterman. He had a bad, bad game, a bad game he, he based on what game. I saw. Yeah. No, I, I, I like the guy. I like the guy, and and honestly, um, so I, I can understand why you got Shaq Quarterman. Mine is different for different reasons, but I can understand how you came to Shaq Quarterman. All right, Frank, who's your, who's your guy who made your roster? 
Okay, so I like this question because um, I, as I was going through trying to see who who popped to me, um, so first of all, the defensive line and the linebackers had a really bad game, especially the defensive line in the middle of the field. Um, when it got, so I was cued in on them. Um, one one guy I'd like to highlight just to. Uh, because I'm going to focus on the defensive line, but let me go elsewhere. Walker Little, to me, he's won the right tackle job. Like, there were times where, like, I didn't feel like whoever was, when he was pass blocking, I didn't feel like they were getting there. When he was run blocking, I seen I seen a couple of plays where he moved people off the ball. Like, his guy was three to four yards past the line of scrimmage. This guy's got feet. This guy's got power. Now, I don't know who he was up against, so I'm not going to – it is preseason, but I liked what I saw out of Walker Little. Now, this ain't, this ain't just because I know that you you wanted to cut Jawan Taylor. Not not quite as bad <laughs> I as I – I cut Jawan. <laughs> not, not quite as bad as I wanted Taven Bryan out of here. But I know I know that you've told – you've said in the past you've seen enough of Jawan Taylor, and he doesn't make your roster. He does, right. As a backup or as a guard – but not as a not as a right tackle. So Walker Little is your guy that has made the team and has solidified his spot. Let me give you another name. I I I'm gonna dog the defensive line for their role, so I want to give you another name. He's a guy I, I didn't know who this was. There was a number that popped, so I had to look this guy up. Israel Antwine. He jumped out at me as somebody who I would keep. He looks like a John the defensive, shelf the defensive line. line. Defensive yes. Line. Okay. Now, Israel what's interesting? Antoine. So I've, you know, I've been trying to keep tabs on all the talking heads and what they've been saying about, and I, I remember vaguely somebody mentioning a guy named Israel. Okay. And so when I seen this number flash, I saw who's this guy Antwine. When I looked him up, it was his name, first name was Israel. I said, "Oh, this is the guy." that there's some buzz in camp for. So this guy didn't come, you know, so there's a couple, like my eyes saw something and it went back to something that other people were seeing. So that's a name that we need to keep in, uh, in mind. Okay. But he, but Walker Little is your made, is your made the team. Oh, I mean, but there was okay. no doubt, no doubt about that, you know? Okay. In my now for, to now me, for, he, made, he made the starting right tackle. I, okay. Now, now in my mind, I'm checking him in at, at right tackle. The 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 competition between him and Juwan is over. And for me, for me. Okay, now you know Juwan didn't play, so that's not really a fair competition, sir. But he's we've we've so. seen enough of Juwan. All right, for me personally, the guy that has made my squad that I feel good about, obviously Frank. It's our number one overall pick. I was scared because you know where the Jags. We jag things up. His his speed to power, he doesn't have a lot of pass rushing moves. He doesn't bend the corner very well. You know, pass rushing moves, I mean his hands. He doesn't bend the corner very well. But his speed to power, dude, he he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna call some fits. I don't know how much, because again, the bullets aren't flying. It's preseason. But I liked what I saw out. Yeah. To me, to me, this makes me feel better about our first round pick. If he keeps playing this way, he doesn't have to have 13 and a half sacks. He can have eight sacks, but he was disruptive. He was back there. He didn't get blown out at all. Right. In the run. I liked him. I liked the way he played. I liked his physicality. That dude to me, give me him. Give me Josh Allen. Let's go. I'm cool with that. I agree. And in a game where you had guys that are stalwarts as far as the Jags are concerned, uh, Roy Robertson, Harris and um, Devon Hamilton. Um, now, I don't think Malcolm Brown played. Um, Jay Tufele was out there. Guys that they didn't if they stood out a lot of times it was because it was bad. So. On the defensive line, the defensive line had a bad game. Um, 
and the inside you know, linebackers had a bad game. And yep. you know, if you include Walker, uh, Trayvon uh, in that um, mix, because he he was on the line, even though he's out, outside linebacker technically in a three four, he was playing defensive end essentially in that hybrid. So uh, I'm including him in the defensive line. He stood out. I, I agree with you. He wasn't being moved. He was moving people around. He was a force to be reckoned with. He, if he continues to play like that, he is going to be somebody that the offensive coordinators who we face are going to have to account for. And if you put Josh Allen on the other side, instead of Caleb on chase on you, all of a sudden got two guys and you have to pick your poison. And that's what we need. We need, we need somebody to help alleviate the pressure off Josh Allen, who does have pass rush moves. And then all of a sudden you're going to go with the talent. They're both talented, but the ridiculous man child over here who could get to you just by bowling over your dude. And if you're going to double team, all of a sudden you got the technician over here. Who's also immensely talented. Pick your poison. Yeah. Now the guy I'm cutting, nobody, nobody said much about him. There's not a lot of uh, camp talk about him. But this was a position that I felt good about going in. I don't feel good about it anymore. Raquel Armstead. I'm cutting him. We cut Cottrell because he got injured. So we waived him injured. And then we brought in somebody else. Raquel Armstead, I would cut. He's played in actual NFL games. Didn't do much. Didn't do much for me. Right. Everybody talked about Snoop Connor. You're talking about Snoop, Snoop, Snoop. Snoop didn't do shit. Nothing. Snoop, I'm glad people love you. People are raving about you when it doesn't matter. Right. When it does matter, you didn't do anything. Nobody in the national media is saying anything about this. They're t- but they are saying this is what they see at camp. So for some reason at camp, this guy's flashing. When it came to that game, he was nowhere to be found. Who was there? Sergeant. Sergeant yeah. was there. Yeah. He caught my eye a little bit. I want to see more of Sergeant and a lot less of, of Armstead. Armstead, to me, you just got cut, buddy. You, you're not a good special teams guy, so can't do much with you. If if you need a special teams guy, maybe that saves Quarterman's job, you know, maybe. Because he's decent on special teams. But So, yeah, my guy I'm cutting is Armstead. Armstead's not here. He doesn't have a spot on the roster. Yeah, uh, I, I'm glad you brought up Snoop Connor because he was a guy I had pegged to really kind of keep it tabs on. Uh, I love James Robinson. Um, I think that he, him and uh, ETN in the AFC South could really wreck some stuff, but I didn't want to rush Robinson back. And I love the idea of Snoop being who everybody said he was in camp absolutely disappointed to see what I saw out of him there was one specific play where the handoff it was to the right but the whole left side of the Jags offensive line pushed to the right opening the most the it felt like it looked like three quarters of the width of the of the field was open All he had to do was stop, plant his foot, and cut to the left, and he had a giant hole to run through. He just ran into the Jaguar offensive lineman. I didn't understand that at all. He that And one of the things that I loved about Robinson is he will find a hole. If you watch the, you know, the, the offensive line, Wherever that pocket is, he moves to it. He goes to it. It doesn't matter how small. If there's not one, he will push through and poke a hole if he has to. And he may not get much, but he'll get a positive yardage. Snoop had it just open for him. Now it was to the opposite side to where the run was supposed to go. You could tell. But that's running back. Plant your foot and cut to the left. I see running backs do it all the time. It's just supposed to be a natural instinct 
Well, I say that. I mean, I, you know. No, no. Finish your thought. Backs do it. Finish your thought, because it's supposed to be a natural instinct that he does not have. And and it's um and uh, yep. and if you go and I wish I had this one teed up. Maybe next uh, episode we'll do. I'll show you this play, but it was immense. Like everything rushed to the right, and I thought, how do you not see that? It's almost akin to a quarterback who's looking right there at a wide open wide receiver and doesn't throw the ball. And you're like, what, how did you not see that? And that signified to me why, uh, and I don't know if that's just jitters. I, I don't know how that works. Maybe you get tunnel vision because it's your first game. I don't know, but it didn't seem like you needed much peripheral to see that big of a, of a, of a opening because there was nothing, literally nothing to your right. All you, I mean, all you had to do was just sort of look and see all that green field and go, I'm going to go this way. And he didn't, he just stuck there and he, he got like half a yard or something. I mean, it was like a hard nosed guy, I guess, but that's not right. going to play in, in the league and that's not game breaking. Now this backs. game, yeah, this game and this game was was horrible at trying to judge any wide receivers. Uh, we Which go one? in; they weren't even there. I don't even know. Yeah, we go in with a third string and a fourth string quarterback who really couldn't Luton do much. Was bad, very bad. Yeah, he wasn't good. I went back; I watched some of it. He wasn't good. He, he was up, his, but yeah, his throws his throws got better because at first he was overthrowing people, like over. You know, he's in like Ohio and he's throwing to damn California. Like, dude, no. Uh, but anyway, he calmed down and he started throwing, but his timing was all there were there were guys open he was not even looking at. I don't know. There was times he found I thought he got some phantom pressure, stepped up and got sat, even though if he would have just stayed in the damn pocket, it was fine. There was no problems. Don't run. You know, so I, I will say this. I, I did think the line played fairly well. Offensive I don't think line. I don't think they ran blocked very good because no nothing was open, but they passed block pretty well. Yeah, I so agree. I'll say that. I'll give that to them. Um, so that way I'm not completely doom and gloom, you know, on the Jags. So I'll say that they passed block pretty good. And then, you know, the the pass rush was pretty good. Uh, um, All right, Frank. Yeah, you said you got some some take. Yeah, up. I was one. The biggest thing that came away from that I came away with was the concept that, and this happened really early. There was two plays that I want to go back to, and I'm going to highlight the defense because we need to stop the run in the AFC South. And we said, or I said, I don't know. I think you might have agreed. It, on paper, this looks like a, a defense that should be able to stop the run. I was more concerned with the back half of the field whether we could stop the pass. The fact that they ran so easily on us is a concern. So I want to highlight, uh, I want to show a couple plays here. Let me see if we can get this to work. Well, while you're getting that up, because people who watch this channel, they know how I feel about Dewey. Winger, you had a good game, brother. You know, yeah, I'm always on you. I'm on you about some stuff that you've done in the past. So this time I'm going to tell you, you've had a solid game. <laughs> get your dewey moment <laughs> i got i gotta do it I, but it's positive it's positive, yeah i, I feel it's positive, you yeah he right? did have a good game i'm I, always he did on jump out at me he yeah, made I'm some, always he on was him. a good position yeah he, he had a good game okay so this is the second play from scrimmage i think yeah because they got the ball first and this is a run play everybody will remember um what a, can, can you see my cursor i can Okay, so here's Quarterman and Muma, and I want you th – this is how they ran the ball on us. This is uh, Caleb on chase on, and this is your boy, Adam Gotsis. Okay, this, I believe, is Devon that, Hamilton. That looked like two of Fele. It may be. I, they, you, they see the hair in the, you, see, you see the hair and the tattoos? Yeah, see, and that's you can't two, tell two because they have hair. You don't know – you can't read their name, so – Okay. I want to say it's Devon Hamilton because they're starting, but it may be. And then Roy Robinson Harrison. Okay. Yeah, and we know Walker's on the other side. Yep. He doesn't really come into play here. Um, so we're going to start this. This is going to be a run. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, this is an important moment. So here they've got the fullback coming, and it appears that the linebackers are keying in on the run, okay? Chase on still isn't even upfield yet. He's getting beat upfield by Gotsis. This now what is yeah, what does that say when when your defensive end has lost the first step to your defensive tackle? Yeah. What does it, that say? It's important to point out. Yeah. Chase on he, he could get cut. Yeah, uh, he he might he might yeah, uh, he might he might be my candidate next week, but but he did some stuff, so you'll live yeah, to play another I wouldn't day. cut him for no reason, but I'd still hold out hope, but it's hope. Yeah, I mean, so fast. so if you look at the play, I'm going to try to talk through this quickly. It looks easy. Yeah, you're good. The linebackers will fill in. One of the linebackers will take the fullback. The other guy comes up to make the tackle. Boom. Right. Easy. Okay, and this is how, this is how a bad run play can happen because it looks like, and I'm going to call him Hamilton. It could be Tuafele. It looks like he's going to take toward the outside and sort of follow around uh, Gotsis. But I, let's, let's continue just for a second. Okay, so let's – now here's – so Muma's filling in. You see Muma here. He's already coming in. He sees the fullback. He's going to engage the fullback. Quarterman is the one, to me, that makes the biggest mistake. Now, he's fixing to get – looks like the center up on him. Yeah, so what happened – what happened is if you, if you go back a little bit, the guard and the center have the same guy, and then the center releases coming out to hit the fullback. He, his release, Muma either sees it and sidesteps it a little bit or is out of position. So the center just goes to who he can get, which is Corbin. Yeah. And so – and. I, I was hard on quarter, harder than on quarterman. The more I watch it, the more I kind of understand what he may have been thinking. Because right here, it looks like leverage wise, I think he's expecting his defensive lineman to continue this way, and he sees the fullback who, if he takes a straight shot, the running back's probably going to follow because you've got you already got this guy and you got this guy coming in, so there's your hole. But what ends up happening here is. You see, all of a sudden, the swim move. Muma jumps in. Quarterman jumps in. Hamilton jumps in. All in this one gap. Guess what happens right here? I bet you. I bet you. He. I bet you. He saw the green. Oh, I bet he, you he sees puts the it, green. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you he put his foot in the ground and saw it. Yeah. Now here's the next one I wanted to point out, and this sort of. Uh, happens a, a, a this is a little bit of a different um play here let's see what happens here so i think this is hamilton again no 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 i don't remember who this is hamilton's here now he gets double teamed so right now one of them one of them should come away and pick up either Muma or Shaq Quarterman, depending on which one leaves. Right. So, and here's the thing too, and this is the thing that I, uh, Quarterman, in my opinion, he's got guys to his left. Quarterman should be, he should be cheating over to the right here. But instead, he's stagnant. And Muma is free again, so he's going to plug around this way. And if you watch here, what what happens to Quarterman? Well, he did jump to the right, and so he gets he gets washed up right here, and Muma gets hit by the fullback, and then there you go. And now that's just, I mean, I don't know. I I think maybe. What what we need, what we want to see is a bit more upfield from our from our linebackers. I I I can't get on um I can't get on Devon Hamilton so much. He was being double teamed, but the linebacker, in my opinion, has to choose a side because he I felt like he stood there and allowed the D Hamilton to be pushed up into his face. And at that point, you're out of the play. 
they to be honest, did make the play. To be yeah, to be honest, they should be they should have been faster at filling those gaps. You see it in front of you, it's left or right. Technically, it doesn't matter if you go left or right if you both get around that that right. That's the you way the blocking works. Make the running back go. Don't wait for the yes. running back. Fill a yes. gap. Yeah, just fill the damn gap. If both of you end up on the, in the same gap with the fullback, whoever gets there first takes the fullback. That okay. leaves the other guy there to, to mop the up, to make the tackle and mop up. That's the way it works. You, you shouldn't wait for the, two guard, the guard in the center to separate. Right. You'll see it. And then you you just go right behind it the minute you see them running back get the ball. That's what you should do. And I don't I, I guess what I don't understand is why it, it isn't a little bit easier. You know, if you got two linebackers, if 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 I'm on the left, I'm cheating to my left. Like I'm not gonna, I don't know. Why would the gap that I'm assigned to be on the right in front of the linebacker in front of my teammate? He's got well, that gap. So, so you don't technically have a gap because I'm taking, okay, so say I'm the guy on the right. The hole is on the right side, not your hole, as you call it. There's a fullback. I move in to pick up the fullback, but you've cheated to the left. You may not be there to make the, to make, to be able to, to mop it up, if that makes sense. Yeah, but I don't know that the, the, I don't know that the strategy is to engage the fullback. I mean, you do because you want to clog the hole if the fullback's there. But in other words, if if you have a if you have a defensive lineman in front of you, and you see a fullback behind him, like he the defensive lineman is engaged with the uh, uh, offensive, offensive lineman, the fullback's behind him and the running back's coming. So he's coming two gaps. If he's coming straight, he's probably choosing one of the two gaps on either side of that lineman. So if I'm on the left, I do, if the fullback chooses to go right, I get that that could mean that the running back follows the fullback. But I don't care that much to engage. You're right. No, you're, if they're both in the same gap, one takes yeah. the fullback. You could easily grab the running back from the opposite from side from behind. Yeah, you know just you're right. Fill the gap. Right. Like, to me, it's just gap integrity. Don't leave a hole for the running back. I don't care necessarily that the fullback went there, and that's what I'm. I, I don't know what they're being taught. Look, I'm not a football expert by any means. I've never played at that level. I never played at any level hardly. So I'm not trying to come off as an expert at, by any means, but. Um, they are supposed to be experts. So this seems like basic football to me, you know, just, and I don't know, maybe there is, I know, you know, if a lineman can two gap, like I know that happens as a, as a, you know, and I know as a, as a backer, you're, you're technically responsible for multiple gaps, but to me, they choose the gap that you're responsible for. They choose it. If, you know, if, if you're, if you got a guy to the right, you know, the gap in front of you, oh, don't go to the right. There's a gap right in front of you. Don't run away from it. And that's to me what I felt like happened a little bit. They're moving side to side a little too much. They should be plugging gaps. It it, it appeared to be simple run stuff. And, and of course, I say that and then, you know, they could really run up there and it's play action and it goes over their head. So I know that there's that to consider as well, but it's just something that, uh, you know, we need to stop the run. If we don't stop the run, we're not going to have the opportunity to pass rush. So when we talked about Trayvon Walker and this uh, finally pass rush, ending, right. it's going to be even, it's going to be hard if they're just running up the middle because that Swiss cheese right there. I mean, as an offensive coordinator, I don't, you know, hey, if I cannot have the ball in my quarterback's hand and I can just run right up because they're, they don't know what they're doing, great, you know. Now, and, and um, I can't remember the guys. Now, I, I, Foley Fatukase, I think that's the, 
Uh, is Foyer Aluakon? I always get these two confused. So I got uh, uh, Aluakon. Lock them in. Yeah, I believe Aluakon is the defensive tackle. Okay, Aluakon. Neither one of them played, so I guess that's, that's the important part. Um, so the hope is is that that center will get fortified, but this is what we've got to look at right now, and I hope and 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 it's funny because you know you, you when you sit back and you break down the film you see. It wasn't all bad, but when it was bad, it was bad in those spots. If there's another guy that I was not impressed with and and I could see easily being cut, it's Gotsis. Like, I've seen him make plays in the past. He didn't do nothing this game of note. Anytime it was man-on-man, he was just pushed out of the way. That's what I saw. Um, Devon Hamilton, I saw – one play, I mean, that play, he was pushed up field four yards. Well, two but guys, he, though, two, guys. two guys. I get that. And then another play, I mean, he just pushed. So he's a little hit and miss for me. I, I get, I get why there's some buzz about and hope for Hamilton. So hopefully they can get it squared away um, and, and figure it out. Again, it is preseason. I'll try to flip back to the optimist, but that's what, that's what happened. Um, that, that is correct. Game. Speaking of with the last few minutes of our show, Frank, I hate to interrupt you, but you know, I like to do it. It's Friday, seven o'clock. I was going to say, what is it? TIAA bank, ITAA bank. I always get that confused. Thank you. Dyslexia. Seven o'clock, seven o'clock Jacksonville, Jacksonville versus Cleveland. Who do you got? Who do you want to see quick? I want to see some starters play. I want to see Lawrence play. I don't, I don't, I know people don't, there's out, there's some question about whether you play Lawrence. I want to play. I want Lawrence to play. I want Kirk to play. I want uh, Zay Jones to play. I want ETN to play. Kirk I rolled an ankle today in practice. He will players. not be playing. That's my Who? prediction. Kirk, he rolled an ankle today in practice. It's not supposed to be severe, but I would not play him. Everybody else except for Kirk and Robinson, I would, I agree with you. I want to see him on the field. I want to see him take him take the ball down, put seven on the board, and go sit down. That's what I want. At that point, at that point, you can lose Jacksonville. You can lose to the run. You can lose to the screens. You can lose by 40. I'm okay because our first offense went out there, marched the ball down the field, and scored. That's what I want. That's what I want to see. So. And no injuries. Yeah, I would. Yeah, all obviously. Oh, as, as much as sometimes I talk shit about these guys, I don't want to ever see them injured. Not our team, not the other team. So, yeah. All right, Frank. It's another Jagging Up podcast in the books. Do oh, I, I just thought, do ball. I'll give them a big do ball if they earn it. Fair so. enough. All right, all guys. Right, thanks for tuning in. Like and share. <laughs> Isn't that what we're supposed to say? Yeah, I think so. Please, so please. The, please.